Hi there. I just posted a couple of videos and panel clips about Empire of Ash, the upcoming Doom of Valyria prequel to Game of Thrones. I've seen the accusation made by some people that this sounds like it was made by SJWs, that this series sounds like it was made by social justice warriors, and it's not a giant SJW fest. If it was, I wouldn't support it, because that's too often used as a substitute for good writing. I like how one of my followers put it, and you just constructive criticism. I've been overstressing the diversity because I'm so upset at how offensively Benioff and Weiss failed women and minorities in the show. Just from a point even of practicality, that do you even realize how crazy and offensive TV Dorn was? This is nonsense. So Basically, I've been worried about winning back all of these people who gave up on the show for being so offensive, and in so doing, I stressed, no, this prequel has got non-white characters in it, if they exist, there'll be women, there'll be gay characters, all the groups that the original show really dropped the ball on relative to the novels. The novels are what I'm using as my template, not what social media blogs say the perfect TV show should be. This is on my merits, on our merits of what we as book fans would like to see, because I think Martin handled it pretty well in the novels. So my followers pointed out to me that you lead heavy with that stuff because it was a major problem, all the diversity, and then only followed up in the fine print, as it were, and they actually thought of ways to work it in that totally fit within the mythos of the novels. I wouldn't have supported this if it didn't do that. that the series Bible is structured in such a way that it keeps citing, like, the world of ice and fire, citing, well, the novel said this, so we're doing this. And it worked in in such a way that it didn't contradict anything. And that's why I really like it. But, you know, like The Simpsons, I said the loud part soft and the soft part loud. It's I'm dealing with sound bites that you guys, all the casual people coming across this, might only see a five-minute burst of this, and I haven't really worked out a good elevator speech. What I did was, in the long break between Season 7 and 8, I made nine hours of documentary videos spaced out every couple of weeks, explaining in detail in a playlist on my channel they actually worked out how this fits the books, this is why this makes sense. And look at my comments section, and please speak up if you're one of the people who did this. Look at my comments section for the people who actually sat down and watched all nine hours of this, and ended up being really impressed that this isn't just SJWs taking over, it's the return of the books, which were pretty balanced in my opinion that we're not getting TV Dorn, we're getting the equivalent of Book Dorn again. Anyhow, I was so happy about, wow, this is on the level of, like, Book Ariane Martell or something, that it's not going to be this crazy Sand Snakes thing. That's what I kept fixating on, because I was so happy about that. Otherwise, oh, why is it so diverse? Well, they picked a diverse setting. They didn't force it. Valyria was like the Roman Republic, and the books already said, well, they have colonies in Sothorios and in Slaver's Bay, so it's, I think, just as diverse as a show set in the real Roman Republic would be. That it isn't set in medieval England, it's set in medieval Italy, medieval North Africa. It said, Zamatar is basically Roman North Africa in the series Bible. That's why it's racially diverse. That makes sense to me. I think that makes sense to the novels. So I've just been yelling, there's a black woman main character who doesn't randomly get killed off to build fake tension like Missande was killed off. That That's, please, you could use your wisdom and intellect on this. That Understand, I've been talking in sound bites. If you're just hearing, wow, it's so diverse, that's just one of the, the better po points they're going to fix. So, make no mistake, as a historian, I'm no fan of that sort of super SJW polemic where I'm, I'm on the side of 
fact, of the truth, of history and academic knowledge, not one ideology or another. And look at if anyone's actually sat through like the whole panel I did on like gender and sexuality. I said there were like people who had same sex relationships in the Middle Ages, but it's wrong for people to say oh, look at all the gay diversity in the Middle Ages. They weren't gay in the sense of modern people. Stop applying your modern social models to the to the past to try to support some agenda. I'm saying we can learn from the past, not just push our own stuff onto it. History doesn't fit neatly into ideological boxes. Don't force your views on it. So, basically, I'm in the awkward middle ground position of stressing you know, from an, a detached academic standpoint, yes, there are prominent female, non-white, and gay characters in it, which I'm happy is building on the failure of the, the original show, but at the same time, from the other direction, I've been defending, yes, they are a society that practices slavery like the Roman Republic, and it's not our place to judge ancient history. Like, HBO's Rome show... I can praise how they depicted both uh, the Brutii and the Julii as, well, there's powerful female political leaders, you have, um, well, and Deer of Armour was in that, who's not white, there's some diversity in there amongst the characters who were the slave characters who came in from other places, and they are a slave society, and I don't judge them for that, because it was 2,000 years ago. A more modern society like... Uh, a, this, a civil war thing, that, that's entirely different. But we're talking about, even, even like in, in the books, like Sansa and Arya are technically aristocrats who look down on commoners. Things like that, just as a historian, don't judge other civilizations for their value sets. So if it was an SJW fest, there wouldn't be slavery in this. And let me tell you, and I've tried to stress this, if you haven't, if you only been paying attention to sound bites. All three of the major factions practice slavery. None of them want to break the wheel. I'm making air quotes. Break the wheel and make a democratic rule. They're not. I mean, some of them want voting rights because they want to be politically powerful and they're not currently in charge. That does not mean they want equality for everyone. Even the freeholders who want more voting rights, most of them own slaves. And this is just like the Roman Republic, where like the colonies, the local elites are saying, we want a bigger say in the Senate. We're, they're, they own plantations, they, they own mines. These are the great engines of commerce that own, and guilds that they own the slave industry, uh, the slave trade. So none of them are heroes, none of them are villains, and that's one of the other things that really impressed me with, on paper at least, what it sounded like they're shooting for. And I, I've said this before, that when started explaining to you, I'm reading the series Bible off to me, that, well, there's the Sphinxes, the Young Dragons, and the Freeholders, and the Sphinxes are the conservative faction, and, quote, they want to make Valyria great again. And I thought, and I almost rolled my eyes, I went, Oh, here we go, the Sphinxes are the evil faction and the Freeholders are the good faction. But then over the course of a two-hour Skype video, it's not that at all. The Freeholders aren't really morally superior to the Sphinxes. The Sphinxes aren't, aren't even antagonists. It's just like the Tyrells versus the Baratheons or something. It's those who have power and those who want to seize power. That's all it really is. And by the end of the whole thing, I actually think the Sphinxes are the most in interesting faction. I've said this multiple times, that from what I've heard, and maybe their tone will be different when we see more, the Sphinxes seemed like the faction I'd support the most. Because in Rome terms, they're the faction of Cato the Younger and Cicero, that they just happen to be the upper aristocrats, that they're Tywin at worst, but Stannis at best. They're the, the people who follow rules and have a code of honor versus, and, and, and principles and versus the new guys, the newbies. Like, the young dragons are, uh, where one of them happens to be biracial, and she is very much an exception. Someone said, oh, you're saying the Valyrians didn't do incest. They did it just as much as the Targaryens did. 
but even the Targaryens, like, now and again, they'd marry uh, someone who wasn't a family member, so we got, like, Baylor Breakspear or something. So that is very much the exception. The story is following that character, who is biracial, so it will obviously be represented pretty strongly, but that is very much the exception, not the rule, even among the young dragons. It, 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 if you didn't look at the whole nine-hour thing I made, it probably didn't... It sounded like they were changing more than they actually are, and something on that big of a level who the POV characters are, I'm pretty sure they worked out with Martin. So, but thinking about, you know, the Sphinxes aren't bad. They're like Cato the Younger... The young dragons are like Mark Antony types. Mark Antony wasn't a good person. He was a social climber who acculturated to Egypt, which is that good or bad, that he acts too much like an Easterner. He acts like a foreigner with his whore Cleopatra, and he's just cynically uh, taking power from the Senate. If you saw HBO's Rome, it's like Cato the Younger versus Mark Antony. And it's interesting to me and each side has its heroes and villains, but they were not playing this up as, oh, the evil conservative sphinxes and everyone else is, is good. They, they're not. That the freeholders, some of them are good, but other ones are just, we are trying to seize power. So, and that impressed me when I saw just by the end of this two-hour thing, you know, I really like the Sphinxes, because they're very interesting. They worked out a lot of their backstory. So, this is what I came for complex, realistic political factions, each acting in their own self-interest, that they're different viewpoints, but there's good and bad on both sides. So, I want to promise you all, now, just everyone who's been following me on this and all you new people, if we get more detail on this show, and it turns out to be very ham-fisted, polemic writing on... SJW stuff. The poor colonies are revolting against the evil white imperialists. If it get, if it turns out to be ham-fisted like that on the on the level of dialogue, I will turn on it. You have seen me do this. That when in franchises we all love, like Star Wars, when they do something bad, you know, when they do something incompetently, I will turn on it. Versus, I mean, would anyone object to having a black Jedi? Like, I don't know, Mace Windu. No. Would we object to, you know, they run around for two hours straight in a movie talking about SJW-type social things. It lacks all subtlety. This this is poorly written. You're, you're just giving a polemic without really telling a story that even has some aspects to it. That I would object to that. As this is just plain lazy writing. So I'm on the side of the truth and, and of history, and I'm kind of a centrist on this. But it's just... If they were doing something I, as a book reader, considered to be stupid, or just this is just you pushing an agenda, I would point it out and criticize it. Because I'm, I'm part of the wiki crowd that points out that th this isn't truth, these aren't the facts. So it, it struck me as the tone of the World of Ice and Fire parts that Martin wrote, where it's just, yeah, like the Summer Isles, they have some heroes, they have some villains, they, they're, they're local political leaders. And if this was doing something stupid, I would point it out. And I will in the coming years as this gets made. If I go, you know, on the level of dialogue, this feels really ham-fisted, even though on paper I thought this made sense. I'll point it out. Because nothing disgusts me more than all of the people who just kept hyping Game of Thrones by, like, Season 8 and even after Season 8 because the perfect show is too big to fail that I like it as a concept for a prequel show, and now I want them to live up to that when they're producing it, to live up to the idea that exists on paper. And, yeah, on paper this might sound a little, oh, these are the characters, they're diverse. Well, compare this to the Long Night prequel, which has told us absolutely nothing. Who Who is Naomi Watts playing? How are you handling any of this? Will they, given that the books never described black characters in Westeros during the Long Night, how the hell are they shoehorning those cast members into Westeros? I don't know. Maybe some of them are, are red priests from the East. They mentioned that. But versus, oh, we'll set it in Valyria, and we've already mentioned that they had outposts in Sothorios, and because it's closer to those parts of the world, and we'll set it in a major port, so you'll see people coming in and out. 
and again, it's not Valyria is diverse. Old Valyria, the capital city, is where Valyrians are. It's about the Valyrian freehold, which spans two continents, from Pentos to Marine to Zamatar, which would probably end up having some racial diversity in it, guys. So, generally, and there were other criticisms that Westeros.org said of, oh, it's too much like late, Ro- late Imperial Rome and not enough like early Greece and Ptolemaic Egypt. I'm not sure how you could judge that from how little I said about it, but I honestly thought it was like Greece and Ptolemaic Egypt. I'm not sure what you're talking... It's like the late Roman Republic, not the late Roman Empire. It's like Marius and Sulla and the Social War of 91 BC. It's pretty obvious when you see what they're talking about of, oh, this is the Social War. So... Other people have actually sat through my nine hours of videos explaining all the nuances of this and how neither faction is entirely hero or villain. Please back me up on this in the comments section, and you guys watching this, please check it out. If their summary of, no, they're, they're interesting, different factions, but I wouldn't say it's SJW stuff. I, I see how you could look at what I said and see there is a danger of that. And even now, I am worried that, well, I'm, this sounds like a good outline but I do worry the dialogue might verge on that. We shall see. But on the level of an outline, I thought it was pretty good. So, I've been focusing on yelling, Hooray! This one isn't racially offensive and misogynist, because that was a big problem before. You know, I'm overrepresenting that, and people were right, that the rest of this in the fine print was me spending hours then explaining, hours of content going, no, they worked out how this makes sense within the show, how, why would people be there from China, from Yi Chi? Well, they came in on the shipping lanes. That makes sense. That All of this made sense to me when I actually sat down. It made sense to other people in the comments section who have seen it. 